Thank you very much. Thank you so much for everyone who's here and everyone who's watching us online. And the second song I'm going to play is called Londosini, the arrangement uh, for a play by the name of Dosini number no. two by Eric Satine. And I made an arrangement inspired in Rwanda, which is African Peruvian rhythm.
Thank you so much. Esse outro tema eu eu pensei eu, eu acho eu acho importante eu acho interessante and I think it's interesting as a migrant to also reveal and talk about not only my story, my personal stories that brought me here. I came here in a context where I structured the idea of migrating around a choice and I should highlight this this was a choice a voluntary decision that I made and I understand that there's other migration contexts because of violence because of wars economic crisis this was not my case but I am so to speak the result of a Brazil that was revealing itself to all of Latin America as a beacon back in 2003 when I started thinking very seriously about taking a sabbatical to rethink a lot of things, to reinvent myself. We can't choose our parents, but we can choose where we will be reborn. And I chose to be reborn in Brazil. And this was because Brazil was a beacon of hope. And one of the figures of the people that come to my mind was the works of the, the work done by Gilberto Gil when he was the Minister of Culture, when he played at the UN with Kofi Annan, Menina Baiana, and that only confirmed that that was the country where I had to to go, where I had to move, and it was the right decision, and that is the context I I concluded my studies about music, my master's, my doctorate, and I am now a professor here with Emaki, and all of this to say. Uh, and to talk about the migrations inside myself and how I dealt with uh, the with Brazil in general, and this theme I'm gonna play is an arrangement by the wonderful musician Emeto Pascual, the universal the universal musician from Alagoas, a uh, thing called Santo Antonio. It is a baile where I go to a place inside the Northeast region and in the Northeast uh, landscape, which is where Hermeto Pascual transfers me to. And then I imagine a trail that leads me to the Andes, and then I uh, can re-meet my grandmother's family from the region of Yuan at the center of the Andes in Peru, so he's from Bahia, and then I visit uh, Peru and go back to Brazil in the theme. I'll let the music speak in, in and of itself. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Well, this is another song, which is a study. It is a festejo, which is another rhythm of the Peruvian coast. And this is a piece for a uh, solo guitar.
Thank you so much. Well, I will now advance to the last thing. This is a song. And the uh, Grande singer is called Eu Sou. What they found very interesting as well. Uh, it, the language, the, idiom, the Spanish language, the maternal language to be present. And that's why I chose this song as well. And I would like once again to thank, first of all, the invitation for our colleague Fernando Valentin and also the production of Andrea. Well, thank you so much. And João and the technical part also. Thank you so much, João. And all of you which came here to enjoy and all of you also online with us. Thank you so much. Dentro de un surco abierto vi germinar Una aurora de infinita soledad Y con una canasta le vi regar Con agua de un arroyo de oscuridad Amala ya la siembra se echó a perder Y el agua del arroyo se echó a correr Al lucero le gusta la claridad al agua del arroyo la libertad no dio fruto el lucero se echó a alumbrar y el agua del arroyo le echó a cantar y en una hora triste quise cantar Y dentro de mi canto quise gritar Y dentro de mi grito quise llorar Pero tan solo canto para callar Amala ya la hora en que fui a cantar Amala ya la hora en que fui a gritar Si gritando se llora para callar Y mi vaso sediento no llega al mar Amala ya la hora en que fui a cantar Amala ya la hora en que fui a gritar Y así se fue el lucero a su claridad Y así se fue el arroyo a su libertad No le llegó la hora de clarinar no le llegó la hora de clarinar No le llegó la hora de clarinar de, de. No le llegó la hora de clarinar se fue el lucero a su claridad y así se fue el arroyo a su libertad no le llegó la hora de clarinar 
No le llegó la hora de clarinar, 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 de clarinar. No le llegó la hora de clarinar. No le llegó la hora de clarinar. De clarinar, de clarinar, de clarinar, de Thank you so much for your participation, Professor Fernando Lamos. It's very emotional for us, beautiful, everything that you have said, and also your experience in the condition of immigrant and your rebirth in Brazil. So it was really uh, a gift to all of us here. As the broadcast of TV started with the presentation of Professor Fernando Lamos, I'm going to restart my Good night to all of you here present with us. And once I introduce myself, I am Professor Andrea Venturasi, and I'm from the uh, Social Sciences of Virginia, and the coordinator of the Institute of Health. It's a great pleasure to be here with the 13th International Seminar of the Academic Chairperson Center for Med. We would like to start thanking this now the, the presidential and virtual a participation of everyone here with us right now. So, as soon as we start then our opening uh, panel, I'd like to, before we start the panel, I'd like to acknowledge the support of the UFG team and the UFG TV and the Digital Dean and the Cultural Center UFG. Uh, thank you so much for all the support and the high commission of the United Nations for Refugees. This event is being broadcasted live in the official channels of UFG on YouTube, and we can't play it as also a Spanish translation into English and Spanish. We also have here Professor Fernando Lamas. Thank you so much for the brilliant presentation once again. And now I still start our opening panel for the 13th International Seminar of the Academic Chairs. General, so I would like to invite the general coordinator of the Institute of Medical, Professor Mahoudis. Our wonderful dean of the Federal University of Wales, Professor Andrew Ashurita Bedevaji. The program of uh, post graduations for the Federal University of Bayas, a few Professor Felipe Terra. We represent the representative of the High Commissioner of the United Nations for the Refugees, Professor Federico Machines. I'm going to say. Ambassador of Haiti in Brazil. Dr. the Labor and Prosecutor's Office of the ICE, 8th Region. We also registered the presence of foreign authorities. The State Secretary of Health, the contract which is the State Committee of Attention to the Immigrants, Refugees, and uh, Immigrants, NGO, and uh, the organization of the Public Interest, and the Center of the Support to Immigrants, Thrive. It's a commission of human rights for the refugees of uh, the Arab 
this and and the urban art that from guys and all our professors connected to the chairperson now and other Thank you so much for your presence. So with the words now, please take your seats. Professor Dr. Angelita Pelia de Chilima, our uh, dear dean. Good evening. It is a great honor and a great pleasure uh, to have this responsibility and, and duty that I take the word now to open our 13th seminar of, of Sajjadir Mel. I um, carry his name of this academic chairperson and Sajjadir Mel through UFG and all the characters is a huge responsibility because we have not only the commitment uh, with the biographies and Peter Nelly, but also this, with the whole part needed to be carried out the defense of the refugees. So I would like to greet first of all our panel and receive all of you and welcome all of you to UFG. UFG is really open with our doors open to well, anyway, integrating all of the major persons and we now looking for several years in trying to implement this. And I've first I would like to greet and introduce our team. The current team of uh, of our academic chair president, Professor Ronaldis, who is our camera coordinator here in the panel with us. I would like to congratulate you and thank you for this uh, open and the brave and the, and the for the work that we and the solution that we did we made to make this seminar uh, take place in Canada. So Professor Laiz, Laiz Tomas, who is from the institutional relations uh, uh, our amateur person, Homo, which is a very good of education, and then our friend, Central Aid, the leader of the activities, and the, the vice coordinator uh, of the activities, Professor Andrea, coordinator of the research activities, and Felipe and is our student and coordinator of uh, research activities, Professor Chabra, which was a member of our academic uh, person as a success of communication. And the team uh, coming up to the first when our academic person is presented. But first, I would like to say on behalf of the Federal University of Grass, UFG, and all of our uh, teaching committee, the committee and party, I would like to welcome all of you with us here online and UFG TV broadcasting everything. And I would like to say that UFG and our program uh, uh, post-graduation, our uh, UFG this year, I uh, brought steps and the important steps to implement their actions uh, at the height of um, the mature person certificate. Um, and according to the data of our federal police in the state of Bags, we have 15,000 refugees here in the state of Bags. And, and most of them from Haiti, Haiti Senegal, and from the uh, Venezuela, from Venezuela, they are the three largest uh, uh, here. And again, in our Christians, we have the presence of all uh, the refugees, and we know that the public policies and the institutions will be fundamental for the refugees to reach citizenship, citizenship, dignity, and a good condition of life. That's our task. So I would like to say that, well, based on all of that, we recently we made a partnership with architecture. What's the name of the Association of Architects from Goiás State to make a competition of 
a project for architectures so we can develop a resident or a household uh, project for uh, refugees, which is a demonstration not only of commitment, but as an innovation. Uh, well, we, when we talk about receiving these refugees and when, have, when we talk about policies to, to, that could really uh, make the people that are in immigration conditions, forced immigration conditions for any reason, that could be uh, in this better to be finding places to remain and to continue their lives. And this way, that's how we want also, uh, we want UFG to become uh, an agent of the process. So UFG, Professor Felipe will be done uh, now. And we have just approved a tender public tender and a resolution that shows uh, a spot, one more additional spot in the post graduation courses of UFG in any of these courses those that would like to enter. And one extra uh, a spot uh, or vacancy for uh, refugees without any uh, deficit or impact in our uh, quota uh, policy. And we understand that it's not only a, a policy to receive these refugees, but which is that when receiving the refugees in our university, we would be somehow also um, helping with this immunization and also uh, using them. Uh, talents and skills that could be um, really uh, handled from um, performing their skills and, and UFG is offering help, but we also win a lot of that, we gain a lot of that. And it's also an entity that would like to strengthen it and make us as even stronger as an institution and our, well, our political project and our scientific project and our uh, so for us to be here today, uh, and we have so also other partnerships in health, and we also have several uh, legal uh, uh, services. And, and so uh, hosting the seminar and uh, having this event here today for us, it is a consolidation and the strengthening of what we are already implementing and what we are and, and have been as a comprehension in our group that I already mentioned. And we know uh, the parts of the, the, of the work of UFG in the city of the and in the state of the for the refugees. So as the Dean of the University of Goiás, I'd like to welcome all of you. I wish you a great seminar. And I declare in the name of Professor Jean Horis that the 13th seminar is now open. Thank you very much. And now I'll pass the floor to Professor João Rodrigues, who will be the mediator of our opening session. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Dean Professor Angelita, our pro host, Professor Felipe Teja, Ambassador of Haiti, Hashem um, our Vice Prosecutor, Marcelo Ribeiro, Representative of Florida, Frederico Martins, ladies and gentlemen watching us online and here in the auditorium with us, and I'm so happy to represent the Sajid Vieira Jamel Chair in the University of Goiás. I'd like to welcome all of you and say that we have prepared uh, an agenda that took a lot of effort and determination to make this space a space for um, exchanges. And the theme is this wall between us racism and xenophobia in the context of refuge and i will now reach uh, i will now read a small excerpt of the text we wrote about the seminar protection and vulnerability inclusion and exclusion walls that separate and bridges we wish to build 
the obstacles faced by people forced to flee are many and they seek protection in other countries. In addition to the immense material and institutional difficulties involved in displacement, many people face indifference, rejection in their host country, and the recent violent episodes against Moezi Abakanki Bujini, Marcelo Cabaraj, and so many other immigrants and refugees are added to practices of exclusion and discrimination that are so pervasive in Brazilian society. How can individuals, how do immigrants and refugees suffer with racism in Brazil? How are these people inserted in affirmative actions dealing with structural racism? How is it that markers such as race and ethnicity intersect with gender, and sexuality, how the affected life of refugees affects them. With all of that in mind, we have drafted an agenda, and in these very significant period we're going through, we invite everyone to reconsider ideas and practices that make refugees vulnerable in a structural manner. Ever since UFG became part of the chair in December of 2020, that's what we have been willing to do, to reconsider, to re-examine how university can contribute to the inclusion of immigrants, refugees, and people in vulnerability. Try and, try and consider how we can collaborate and dialogue with public institutions that are responsible for asylum and thinking about the city and the state under the perspective of an institution that contributes with research, teaching, and extension. In, the, in these two years, we made several events, advances in our institution, both in undergraduate and graduate courses, provision of health services, training for professors in the public network, Portuguese as a welcoming language, technical assistance in housing, presence in local migration and refuge communities, inclusion in graduate courses, among others. There's still much to do, like the inclusion of immigrants and refugee students in our undergraduate courses. Well, lastly, I would like to thank a few people. First of all, my friends at the chair, an initiative that takes a lot of hands, heads, and most of all, many hearts. It is made up of people who have the best attitudes that I have found in all my time in UFG. Commitment and empathy. I'd like to thank everyone who participated directly in organizing this event. Andrea de Torais, Carolina Is, Felipe Aquino, Fernanda Valentin, Raiz Tomás, Romulo de Souza, Suzette Bessa, and Thiago Franco. It has been a privilege to work with you. I would also like to thank the kind support provided by UNH, UNHSR, uh, by Andrea and William. And I would also like to thank the public institutions who always support the chair in the state of Goiás. And lastly, but not least, least important, I would like to thank the NGOs and civil society organizations who are at the front lines in the hardest situations. And lastly, I'd like to welcome all of our refugees and immigrants. Welcome to UFG. And now I'll pass the floor to our pro-host, Felipe Teja. Thank you so much, Joel. Good evening, everyone who's here in this auditorium, everyone who's watching us online. And first of all, I'd like to greet my fellow panelists, our wonderful Dean, Professor Angelina, the ambassador of IG, Ms. Rachel, the representative of the High Commission 
Prosecutor's Office of the UN for Refugees, Dr. Federico, and the Prosecutor of the Prosecutor's Office of Goiás, Marcelo, and you, João, my friend who has been working with me for such a long time. I'd like to say it's an honor to be a part of this panel, a panel to initiate the seminar for the Sergio Vieira de Mello Chair, which here in UFG plays a fundamental role developing initiatives and policies geared to refugees, because these are people that, in addition to all of the socioeconomic activities they face, they also face cultural activities, cultural difficulties, language barriers. So these initiatives are incredibly important because the because UFG has always been an in, a protagonist in inclusion policies. So breaking down these walls and complying with the Constitution's provision saying that everyone should have the right to education regardless of gender, color, race, and we strive to do this. And when we began uh, working with as part of the chair, Professor Joan came to us and said, what do you think about being protagonists and leading uh, undergraduate courses in separating spaces for refugees and immigrants? And he said, yes, this is absolutely necessary. We need to make space for refugees to comply with UFG's mission to welcome everyone and we issued a decree that is now available for all under for all graduate courses that wish to make space for refugees and people who have been forcibly displaced and even further than that in the next uh, university council we are going to present a resolution where we're going to make this decree and university resolution a continuous policy where refugees will receive uh, scholarships that guarantee their permanence through this policy to continuously meet the demands of the refugees. I would also like to thank and greet Dr. Rachel, the Haitian ambassador, and is representing the Haitian community in our city, in our state, and specifically in our institution. We have a lot of Haitian students in graduate courses. We're now receiving a lot of Haitian institutions through the Coimbra Group uh, in the Organization of American States. I think we're, we'll be receiving eight or seven students from Haiti. So we're very honored with her presence here. And also UNHCR, uh, I had the opportunity to talk to Mr. Federico and uh, we're very honored to have him here. And like Professor Angelique has mentioned, I wish everyone a wonderful event. I'd like to congratulate everyone who organized this event uh, because they're very engaged and competent people. So I wish everyone a wonderful event that will add a lot of value and present all of the perspectives of the Sajo Vieira Jumelo Chair. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Professor Filippi. I will now pass the floor to the representative of UNHCR, Mr. Frederico Machins. Thank you so much, Professor, and good evening. I would like to begin by greeting the Federal University of Goiás, represented by Ms. Angelina Pereira de Lima, our Dean. I would also like to greet Felipe Terra, the Pro-Host of Research, and Professor João Roriz, the Coordinator of the Chair. I would also like to greet Ms. Rachel Popo, the Ambassador of Haiti, and Mr. Marcelo Oliveira Silva, the Vice Chief Prosecutor of the Prosecutor's Office of Goiás. I would also like to greet the public who's watching us online. And in the UNHCR's opinion, uh, we are very happy to be here sharing 
the opening panel for the 13th National Seminar of the Chair. And this is a very important moment for the chairs. The chairs currently have uh, 35 participant universities, which is the highest number in history ever since its existence. And for me, the chairs are now receiving the recognition as a global good practice that, in fact, our headquarters is organizing for next October in the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil an, ex an exchange for of ideas or an exchange of experiences with universities in the Dominican Republic and in Ethiopia so that we can present the model of the chairs. And I think this is a speak to the recognition that the work of the chairs and the universities have been doing. So we are very satisfied to have this recognition of the chairs. And this seminar uh, is also a moment that addresses many challenges for the international protection of refugees. In this year, in 2022, we have reached a record number of over a hundred million people who were forced to flee due to persecution, conflict, violations of human rights. And since it, this is the theme of the 13th seminar of the chairs, and it's important to recognize and emphasize all of the efforts to fight racism and racial discrimination, considering that these are factors that still to this day cause forced displacement, but that also can uh, work against the work done by, by the protection actions on be uh, the protection agents on behalf of the refugees. Now, we have uh, been going through a pandemic for over two years and the situation is much better now, but the pandemic also uh, made the fact that the closing of borders is not always the best way to provide safeguards and aid for the refugees and guarantee the human rights they should enjoy. And we should also emphasize that reality is still changing and that the displacement of refugees do not happen in a void. And on the contrary, currently today, especially in the American continent, they are the mixed movements that engage refugees and asylum seekers and also migrants and other profiles. And this characteristic has been recently recognized in the America Summit, especially in the Los Angeles De Declaration. And this also brings this conversation a lot closer to Brazil. And we were able to see how movements that perhaps didn't even start in Brazil, but people who are in Brazil and in Chile start making this crossing throughout all of America Latina, Latin America going to several countries until they reached the United States, which perhaps was the destination they desired. And we should also address peripheric countries because one country cannot uh, address the refugee situation isolated or alone, but another of the challenges is how can we emphasize the solutions? Refugees are normal people under extraordinary circumstances, but many times the focus of the response is emergency action, issuing of documentation, and sheltering, which is fundamental and essential, of course, but it is also evident that we need 
to start thinking about uh, public policies that are more long term and how can we create an environment where refugees are able to live normally like all of the rest of society. In addition to these challenges, we would also like to congratulate and recognize the achievements and opportunities in terms of refugee protection in Brazil as well. And I would like to emphasize four of these achie achievements. The Acolida operation as a, an effort made by multiple actors, which was very successful and with the participation of the and leadership of the federal government. It has become a regional model that is globally recognized. And with these three axes of uh, helping interiorization, sheltering, which also includes this idea of the need for integration ever since people arrive in the country. Brazil also have been, has been developing other experiences currently humanitarian uh, visas for populations from Afghanistan, Ukraine, and Haiti are still saving lives. And it's with a great satisfaction that uh, they add to the efforts of enforcing the, the measures to receive and shelter these populations. About two, three months ago, we had a book to talk about a third good practice in Brazil, best practice in Brazil. Well, I've been in I was in Natal, in the city of Natal, celebrating the first meeting of the forum of the council and, uh, and committee, state committees of refugees and immigrants. And these councils and committees would be the way of how to materialize and how to make public policy, inclusive public policies for refugees and immigrants. So, still, I believe, is still a pioneer in developing structures such as these that would bring the public power closer to their daily lives of the refugee population. And about six weeks ago, I took part also in the meeting of the forum of companies with refugees. Well, it's a very special forum. It's a very special forum, and I want to talk a little bit more about it, and I will conclude. So, uh, that will evidence really well a new paradigm for the protection of refugees that in Brazil it's very present and very consolidated, which is what we call the role of society approach. That draws that contemplates the society as a whole. Highlighting the private sector, which and it's very wealthy to be in such a room like this, listening to directors and CEOs of human resources to talk about the importance of inclusion and the companies, the importance of hiring refugees. And after all, uh, we have this uh, measure that we should. Uh, bring them back to normal normality and dignity and it's also true for the refugee population so that's why we celebrate initiatives where the private sector is also present but i started talking about this approach the whole society approach which is one of the pillars of the global pact uh, the world pact of refugees and then I would like to reflect on a little bit to conclude. The uh, pact was started by the General Assembly of the United Nations in late 2018. But this view of engaging the society, the whole society, I believe it already existed in Brazil a uh, while well ago before that. A uh, while well before that, yeah, when it was recognized as a model at a world level. And really, the the chairs are a reflection of that. How the academia has a role, and a very important role, not only in providing uh, opportunities of education and, and 
in being, but also these other services available, but also being an actor which, in not all the countries, is so strong as in Brazil. So that's a good reason to celebrate. But I also, I always would like, I like to talk to my friends, uh, the adventures to teach them, to organize in how the universities are really stakeholders in transformation and, and social transformation. I think that Brazil has been a pioneer. And I'm talking about the global path, right? How we recognize this social society approach and how we could be connecting. And what, how I would like to tease you guys about this, how the Brazilian universities have been pioneers. How can they uh, do this together? And how could we think about the future of refugee protection? So I would like to ask for your support to reflect together. 20 years that the academic church exists and the participation of the academia in the protection of the refugees was also a pioneer then. So nowadays, how could the protection of refugees be? What is the context that it must have 10, 20 years from now? I believe that this potential of the universities and with the students and the professors and the whole community, the university community, I would like to, to challenge all of you to and together to see how this protection would be and how it can be uh, the, the, the stake, the, the refugee and the main stake on. Uh, thank you so much and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here celebrating with you all. Well, we accept the challenge. Thank you so much, Professor Federico. So now I pass the word now to our near Professor uh, Masaladil. Good evening to all of you here present us in the seminar, presentially or virtually. I'd like to greet the members of this panel, our Dean Angelita Pereira de Lima. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here as the representative of the Public Prosecutor's Office and uh, Labor Office, and I'm very honored for that even that I graduated here from our UFG, our dear UFG, where I also uh, took my master's in agrarian law and I completed the course in 2010. And about a topic which is strongly related to the seminar that you idealized. And congratulate you all for that. I approached right then the now uh, uh, slavery is late labor to Brazil in the 21st century. The new outlines of an old problem. And we are sad with that because we, it has passed 12 years and we are still fighting against this evil. And last week I was even in a city here, 150 kilometers away from Goiânia city. And we rescued 16 workers, one six, an uh, uh, analogous slave uh, immigrants, uh, internal uh, workers coming from Bahia State and Maranhão State, being uh, exploited by a network of bad, as we call those uh, agents of Zappos, and they were put into degrading and sad situations to the dignity of human people. And the uh, Public Prosecutor's Office is part of the uh, uh, Union, uh, the Federal Prosecutor's Office, and it is uh, the natural prosecutor for the fundamental rights and human rights. And I found very interesting. I would like to congratulate you for the topic of this seminar, this wall that separates us. This makes us reflect what are we doing building we are constructing walls building walls that separate us segregate us racism xenophobia and discrimination 
and no prejudice of any type, they would be walls that separate us. And um, that uh, uh, allow, uh, enable us to read something uh, better. better. Uh, I realized uh, uh, one of uh, the those that I like that work as the social right and the dignity of human as the principle. Uh, principle of the Federative, Federative Republic of Brazil. And in this context, it's extremely important for us to discuss because we know that the refugees and immigrants are a uh, target of discrimination, racism, xenophobia, and also in the labor relations. And that's where we have the role of the public prosecutor's office, the labor office, uh, fighting against any kind of prejudice and discrimination in the field of labor relations. We work strongly, for example, in the inclusion of this person with uh, any physical disability, the inclusion of youth, apprentices, for example, and we fight against the inequity, the payment inequity of women in relation to men, for example, or from our black. And we also fight to reach equity, equality, and the protection in the labor environment, which should not be a factor of risk of uh, death or illness. So the public prosecutor's office is very honored for the invitation to be here, taking part in the seminar, uh, the opening of the seminar, and we are uh, available uh, and the refugees and immigrants can, that are here with us, well, we are all here available to help you all in whatever possible work we need and in the protection. So all of the people could have a safe work environment, which is not, and they should not be uh, a target of uh, discrimination, racism, xenophobia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, well, last but not least, we'd like to pass the word now to the ambassador of Haiti, Rachel Paul, who will give a presentation in English. Ambassador. to meet and talk and to have the opportunity to dialogue with you. Thank you. Being the last one to speak, everything has been said. <laughs> so that's an advantage. Uh, Professor uh, Angelita Pega de Lima, Dr. Jao Ruiz, Professor Philippe Terras Martin, Dr. Marcelo Ribeiro, Consilor Anselmo Pereira, Mr. André Madureira, Mr. William Moreno, ladies and gentlemen, all of you present and those who are watching us virtually, I am honored to participate tonight at the opening ceremony of the Seminario Nacional de Catedra Sergio Vieira de Melo and to stand next to all of you members of the university and civil society and institutions. I should as you said, should be expressing myself in French or Creole, as these are Haiti's national languages. But because of time constraints, translation constraints, I'll be speaking in English. And I must admit that my Portuguese, the Portuguese language is such a beautiful one that I do not want to insult it with my poor pronunciation. So I'll go where I'm most comfortable. Uh, this seminar is an occasion to present the work of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. It is also an opportunity to address very difficult and sensitive topics such as racism and xenophobia and their impact on the lives of refugees and those who also 
live amongst them. My understanding is that a roundtables on race, class, global refugee regime, mobility, public policies, education will be safe places to discuss openly and clearly, and also an opportunity to challenge ourselves, our colleagues, to learn and to seek solutions to existing challenges that most of you mentioned here tonight, and to anticipate, if possible, on trails that many may arise in the future. I therefore wish all of you constructive dialogues based on facts, numbers, reports, experience, but also on compassion, tolerance, love for the work and changes you choose to bring about in this world. I also wish that discussions will be fostered, but also by, your, by our empathy for human beings whose lives are being altered and that it will remain the core of the subjects to be discussed. Uh, choosing not to talk about the origins, definition, history of racism and xenophobia, I'd rather spend the next few minutes sharing with you some of my experiences since I arrived in Brazil a year and a half ago, and how on a daily basis I'm giving the opportunity to humble myself. This country is a beautiful but huge country. It is also a melting pot of migrants of several nationalities. Its history is as fascinating as Haiti's, and our people have a lot more in common than we can imagine. Being the ambassador of Haiti, I will also focus my, uh, my speech on my experience and also my people and my country. Brazilians in Haiti have a lot in common. We like to eat rice and beans, we like to sing, we like to dance, we like carnival. We love family, we love people, and when given the opportunity, we share with others what we have. Since my arrival in Brazil, our team's focus has been the well-being of our estimated 135,000 Haitians who were welcomed by the Brazilians since 2011. If I'm not mistaken, making it the second, you were talking about the three most uh, groups, second group uh, after Venezuela. I have taken part in Conito and many of our consular commissions. We only have one office in Brasilia. So we go, we decided to go towards and to meet our compatriots. Although the majority of our citizens were grateful for the opportunity given by Brazil and its citizens, the stories about why and how they came about to leave home brought tears and sadness and bittersweet feelings, giving us at the embassy the desire to do more and better. From January 2021 to this date, we served more than 19,000 Haitians via our consular services. This number is quite impressive for a team of 10, but much more remains to be done on many levels, such as facilitating the Haitian nationals' access to documentations from Haiti, family reunifications, supporting the government's efforts to adopt inclusive public policies, assisting to the best of our capacities the institutions in charge of integration of refugees, social cohesion, and eliminating the social barriers that support and nurture racism and xenophobia. Brazil is an amazing terre d'accueil, with legislations that welcomes and offers many advantages to those seeking and or those looking for better opportunities. One should never overlook the human aspect of the Brazilian legislation. As all of you here are about to address the complex issues mentioned by so many of you and above, it is my wish that refugees remain to be considered as group and individuals who represent diversity in the workforce. For those who don't know, 35% uh, of the refugees of Haiti, uh, sorry, 35%, yes, of the refugees of Haiti work in the agro-industry in Brazil. So they should, they represent a diversity in the workforce, culture, culinary aspects. All of these can be added to the rich lifestyle and culture of this country. The refugees are also a source of endless teachings on resilience, determination, hope, 
while giving us the opportunity to practice acceptance, altruism, compassion, and respect. In conclusion, I wish you all the courage to continue your work during these challenging times, because they are. I wish to thank you all and those doing the groundwork, the municipalities, the governors, the governments, the institutions such as DPU, associations, the churches, uh, Casa do Migante also, who assist the embassy staff on a regular basis. I bid all the organizers and participants success over the next three days of workshop, and may God all bless us all. Thank you. Thank you so much for the participation of all of the authorities present here. I ask you to get back to your seats and for only Professor Dr. João Rodis to remain to compose the directive uh, panel for the Sérgio Vieira de Mello chair. So now we'd like to invite the senior assistant of eligibility and representative of the High Commissioner for Refugees of the UN, Professor Emilio Torres Laureano. The representative of the UNHCR Brazil, Professor André de Lima Madureira. And uh, thank you for being here, professors. And right now, we'd like to invite the representatives of UNHCR Brazil, André Gino Madreira and William Torres Lariano to do the public reading of the results of the annual UNHCR report. Good evening, everyone who's with us today in person and also online. William and I have the very enjoyable task to present to you firsthand the results of the activities and the wonderful work that the 35 universities in the Sergio Vieira de Mello chair have uh, done in the last year in Brazil. But before beginning, we, could, uh, we couldn't go without thanking each of the universities for all of the work they do every day on behalf of the millions of refugees, asylum seekers, uh, and other people who are forced to flee and who seek protection here in Brazil. And especially thank the Federal University of Goiás and we'd like to thank the presence of Dean Angelisa Vieira de Lima and congratulate all of the professors in the Federal University of Goiás in, in the name of Professor João Ruiz. It was a pleasure to monitor the organization of the 13th seminar. And I'm very happy to be here with you in person today. We have been working uh, with the chairs in the last two or three years, and this is the first seminar I can be present in person. And it's a pleasure to be here and present firsthand all of the results that you achieve every day in seeking protection and solutions for the people who need protection in our country. So now we're going to present a report we have just shared with all of the universities, with all of you, the full report. And if you want to read the detailed report, the, it will be made available tomorrow in the UNHCR website. You're going to find a version in English and a version in Portuguese. Well, now we're going to begin uh, presenting by saying that 
the chair is the fruit of a partnership between the UNHCR and the university that the universities that began in 2003 and we started with two universities we currently have 35 universities and if in the beginning the idea was most of all to disseminate the international refugee law and international human rights especially within the academia as the years went by our uh, fields of action expanded and it's and they're currently very much in line with addressing problems in society as a whole and the work of the chairs has expanded going beyond importing academic knowledge and actually going into the day-to-day -day, uh, development of activities for the benefit of these people, uh, providing assistance to the state in all of its level, federal, state, and municipal, uh, seeking to strengthen access to rights, to services, and also with the implementation of the public policies. So the chair here in Brazil, before talking internationally here about this approach, we have academia in Brazil also saw as necessary to roll up our sleeves and to be out in the field um, on a daily basis with the social assistance secretariats, organize civil society to contribute for the protection of these people. So we expanded our lines of action and currently the chair acts on four main axes, teaching, which not only disseminates and impart academic knowledge, international refugee law, international human rights law, but also promotes access by people with international protection demands to university education and integration, also promoting the revalidation or reissuing of the diplomas for the, these people, the, providing the permanence of these people, of refugees and persons of interest in the university through the provision of scholarships. So in this way, the chairs have expanded its lines of action. We also have the research lines promoting studies and research, qualitative research about the living conditions of refugees in Brazil. Uh, also extension, which is basically direct actions in developing direct activities with refugee communities going from Portuguese classes up until health services, psychosocial support, uh, workforce integration, and legal consultancy. And lastly, in the last few years, the academy academia through the chairs in Brazil has become engaged in several interventions for advocacy interventions and political interventions participating in state councils for the protection of refugees and contributing directly to the implementation of public policies. So this is the general overview of the lines of actions promoted by the chairs and we are now going to look at the wonderful numbers that these 35 universities have achieved in the last few years in the last year actually and uh, so this number those numbers we're going to present are from the second semester of 2021 and the first semester of 2022 so i'm, I'm going to have to show my slides here um, you can go to the fourth slide, which is the Brazilian map. And just to give you an idea, in this 35 universities here in the Brazilian ter territory, um, 
And in last year's seminar, we had 28 universities. So in the last year, seven new universities uh, became a part of the Sergio Vieira Gemello Chair in Brazil. And we are in advanced talks with other federal universities, and we hope to close the year with even more universities, uh, like the University of Amazonas, the University of Pará, and several other federal, state, and state universities here in the country to further expand these partnerships. So this is the current state uh, 35 universities, and in this slide here, we're going to talk about uh, education, talking, first of all, about the disciplines. Over 200 disciplines were offered by these universities re that were related to the protection of refugees. 130 disciplines in undergraduate courses and 74 in graduate courses. All of the universities is, that are part of the Sarge Vieira Gemello Chair offer at least one discipline in the courses in graduation, in undergraduate and graduate courses like anthropology, communication, geography, law, health, sociology, sustainability, a series of uh, disciplines giving us the dimension of the interdisciplinary character that the chairs have achieved in Brazil. Over 3,500 students were reached by these disciplines offered in the last year, and also within the education perspective, but going beyond the offering of disciplines. We also have a lot of universities that implement the facilitated access of refugees to higher education. So in this last year, 22 universities either uh, had specific contacts for refugees or uh, provisions that facilitated the access of refugees. And over 170 uh, spaces offered. So in June of 2022, we had over 500 refugees, asylum seekers, or people with international protection needs who were forced to flee their countries to seek international pre protection enrolled in universities in Brazil. We work on a daily basis with the protection of these persons of interest. We know that uh, accessing university is uh, important, be, but we also need to talk about uh, permanence in university. So some universities also offer incentive programs for, so that these people can remain here in Brazil, enrolled in university, and that they're able to stay in university and be able to complete their university education. 25 universities in the last year have implemented some for, form of permanence program, uh, like uh, meal tickets, uh, sheltering, or scholarships. And now, next slide please, and I'll pass the floor to my colleague. We're going to um, I think the slide they're showing is about these three aspects, permanence, the projects that were developed, how universities became engaged with these permanence programs, and next slide please. And we know that the validation of diplomas is a hard and costly process that demands 
a high amount of documents, uh, proof, analysis that are very criterious and are usually carried out by public universities, which are the ones that have the expertise to validate diplomas. And the fact that people are able to validate their diplomas makes them able to work in the areas they studied, which facilitates local integration and improves the quality of life of the families, not only refugees who start working in their own field, but also their families and other people who are quite close to the community. And we had 123 diplomas revalidated for uh, persons of interest in different areas like administration, architecture, biological sciences, even engineering, journalism, um, even medicine. So this uh, opens a world of possibilities. And Venezuelans and Syrians were the two nationalities who had the highest numbers of revalidated diplomas during this period. We have universities with facilitation uh, projects and internal norms that facilitate the revalidation of diplomas, thinking about these difficulties. And we have some federation units that uh, do not charge for the revalidation of diplomas so that it can be easier uh, when we see that resources are usually scarce and we also have 14 universities with specific projects for the revalidation of diplomas, including the individualized uh, services and the monitoring of these refugees while this process is happening. So within these 123 diplomas which were revalidated, we're going to find those who had the support of university projects and those who didn't. We currently have uh, a project with an NGO by the name of Compassiva, based in Sao Paulo, which offers specific support related to the theme. And this year, uh, we have an ongoing consultancy uh, and a study that's being carried out with the universities about this process, the main bottlenecks, how to improve and facilitate this process. Next. So moving away from the education field, um, we now move on to research. And in this last year of the report, 22 universities have specific research groups about refuge, um, meaning the production of knowledge. So 50 research groups, these research groups uh, deal with architecture, urbanism, law, international relations, so health, psychology, communication, a huge variety. And we are dealing with 955 researchers who are working with the refuge theme, including doctors, uh, graduates, masters, out of which uh, 339 receive some sort of scholarship or incentive from the foundations or from the federal government. So we're talking about a universe of almost a thousand researchers throughout Brazil that are linked to the chair and producing knowledge in the protection field and supporting the actions done in the field uh, and also by other people who at work in this field. And in terms of extension, as we mentioned, uh, daily appointments with refugees that are carried out by the universities. Uh, traditionally, we divide these appointments uh, 
into health services, 16 universities provide basic and dental health services or forward these refugees to the public network if the university is not able to provide the services. 18 universities that provide mental and psychosocial health services, humanize services with people who have been trained and who have uh, seen nice to people in this period. And when we talk about legal assistance, going from uh, basic legal demands uh, We're talking about 1,500 um, appointments. And these are people who were who sought out these services and were able to process documents or receive specific legal consultancy. So this year we've ha we have had uh, with the conclusion of the pandemic when we talk about the federal pol police and the demands of for services on September 15 the deadlines will come back into force so right now we have people who sought out in documentation services understanding that uh, upon reaching September 15 the documents would become expired so we had a uh, documentation appointments with a high number of volunteers to be able to reissue these documents in Guarau, Ribeirão Preto, and Passo Fundo, for example, who had almost a thousand appointments in a week, uh, also in partnership with civil society organizations, the federal police, and local organizations in the public, local public power, to guarantee that people wouldn't uh, have expired documentation by the end of September and face problems due to this. Going now with the teaching of Portuguese language, which is actually important and remembering that it's one diploma of the English Portuguese language issued by a university. Our university is recognized by the Ministry of Education, not necessarily public, and it has a validation to the process of naturalization. So this helps for those that are but once the naturalization and the five universities that offer three courses of Portuguese, reaching 2,500 refugee students in this period. And besides that, we had the project of local integration, understanding that local integration as a support to the interest of the labor market, and facilitating and our mediating uh, companies so to ensure that they can somehow enter the, the labor market and then we had 530 support services for those that uh, access these services and yeah the extension we are talking about actions the sessions as Andrea has already mentioned lots of the academic chairs and participated in municipal state council had the representation of the academic chair in the forum of our state committees, participating in a town council meeting, and we could then verify that out of the 35 universities to ensure that I had some kind of activities and some kind of actions in this field, participating in this production uh, of policies, uh, or in the debates, in the creative activities, and also uh, the way on how the, the university would reach the Brazilians, even, even um, out of the university. We had hundreds of events carried out by the universities connected to the presidential chair in this period. We talked about uh, presentations, lectures, seminars, workshops, uh, conversations, always in this uh, field trying to touch the Brazilian, the Brazilians and the community aware of. Uh, need to shelter and protect the refugees. And we're, we're getting to the end of this report with some of the information that we collected during the year, remembering that this is the 
Um, so it, it's not our work, it's the work of the professors, all of those that are part of the, of the chair. Without these professors, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be here talking about this work, we wouldn't have this report. What is also a uh, bigger collection that we have in our down and volunteer basis, so the professors, once a year they, a year they stop their job to answer this. So I take them all for the dedicating this time and to forward us this information. And this report helps us a lot, showing the reach of the universities and the reach of their work. So I always thank you so much for the report that it's always improving and it's improving because of you and that's why we can do this work because of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Laura. Well, uh, I think this shows uh, how the university is going through such a tense moment as we are now. We are going to show that the that, that university exists. So I always uh, I also would like to, to thank UHNCR uh, so we can continue to have this work. So before closing, I would like to call your attention, uh, all of you, that tonight at 9 p.m. We are going to have the launching of the campaign, uh, No Racism and No Xenophobia, that will be uh, broadcasted on the channel, uh, with the hour event being broadcasted, UFG TV, and for conversation with Chad Congo, a professor of the uh, uh, Uganda Foundation University, uh, led by the John Chris Wismund. So enjoy this event, and I think it's going to be very interesting. We would like to invite all of you as well to and enjoy the rest of the event that will be tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. In these two days, we are going to have four uh, roundtables. One of them will be international with uh, international guests. And uh, work groups with people from other different universities and academic uh, around the country. I would like to reinforce that it's a totally free event. And uh, all of you are invited also to follow us on the social media so you can uh, learn more about other people in the future. So now I close this panel. I thank uh, everyone's participation once again. I really would like to thank all uh, Professor Willem and the rest of the presentation and for the preparation and the report. I would like to ask you all to follow the other activities of the 13th National Seminar uh, of Chairs Catatagmel. And they will be chatting with lectures, work groups, and several other activities throughout uh, 29th and 30th of September. And we're on the different channels like the YouTube. And tonight also, we're going to have the a bunch of this, that's very important. Uh, thank you, Chavo, and all, everyone organizers of this event and the video racism of the you know also and you can share that will come with this one at Chagal Paran Shakko. And that's it. Thank you all for your participation and presence. Thank you very much and see you next time. Acabou!